Welcome to another edition of our Cornhusker Conversation. Today we welcome in Husker wide receiver Cade Warner. A bye week, man. I mean, that's some, not something this program's had. Uh, what would you do to take advantage of your little time off? Just rest. Every single time we got off, we just rest as much as you could. Able to go to the pumpkin patch, have a nice little Saturday off. I don't even know when we'll have the next one off. So uh, it was a nice little weekend. And I'm sure for you to get your body healthy too, any extra time you get is beneficial. What's your treatment plan been like this year? I know you've been fighting to, to get snaps on the field, but just day to day, you know, taking care of your body, what's that entail? Yeah, usually it's get to the stadium about an hour before practice, um, get breakfast and head right straight to the training room, do laser, stretch, all the treatment you can before practice to kind of get it ready and then practice and then back here about an hour and a half before meetings and do the same thing again. Your coaches have, have said for multiple weeks, even before last week, you're close, you're close, you're close, you're close. I mean, what what was the last hurdle that you had to get over to finally get there? I mean, it had to be so frustrating to be so close for so long, but then, you know, you finally are able to, to get out there against Minnesota. Yeah, so, I mean, I had a stress fracture in my leg um, in fall camp, and that kept me out the first week, two weeks, and then the first real practice I got back from that, I tweaked my hammy, um, and I never had a tweaked hammy before, so I really didn't know what it felt like. Um, so I just kind of practiced through. I was like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And it turns out I wasn't fine. So then it took a while to get back into playing shape. And every time I did, uh, I got in the end of Ohio State. And I got in for a couple of plays, but I wasn't warmed up. And I kind of did something to it again. So uh, it was just that nagging hamstring injury. But um, I feel great now, and I'm ready to go. They always say that, you know, the hamstrings are the hardest ones because you feel great until you don't. What would you have to learn about that, about, you know, how to listen to your body and, and know when you're actually good to go? Yeah, Coach Walter says it best. He's, you don't tell your hamstring when you're ready. Their hamstring tells you. And I learned that the hard way. And, and going forward now, I'm in there still 24-7 to make sure it doesn't happen again because I want to be out there as much as I can. We chatted after the Minnesota game, and I had to have just been – hell for you the first few weeks you know seeing how thin we are at wide receiver and, and how much you couldn't be out there what'd you learn about not only yourself but you know about this team and and what you needed to do to, to get out there in that trying time because that's that's a hard thing to do yeah I think at the end of the day it was just about chemistry between um the wideouts and the quarterbacks and I think that uh, I bring a good chemistry between me and the quarterbacks of the field and and I think at the end of the day, it was tough to see uh, us go through struggles with the wide receiver just with the details of everything. And, and it's hard to get that chemistry between the quarterbacks and the wideouts. And I think we were there really close a lot of times, and we just couldn't get it clicking just right. Um, and I hope moving forward we're able to. You have a lot of young players, some freshmen in that room. I mean, how have you seen them kind of change personality-wise from these guys that are coming in from, I mean, Darian from Washington, and you got guys kind of from all over the place, Demarion from Texas, and, and now they're here, and they're probably starting to come out a little bit. How have you seen their personalities change through, I don't know, eight weeks of the season? Yeah, I mean, they're all great dudes. I love Darian. He's with us a lot, and, and he's been able to get some playing time this year, which is awesome for him. Um, the cold, obviously, is always a struggle, so as we get to there, we'll see how they do. But I think they do just fine, and Darian's making a lot of strides in his game. And same with Wanda, being a new guy. I mean, we all know who, what he can do already. Um, and Demarion and all those guys are doing a great job. Um, I just think we got to see how they progress the rest of the season. It's hard to consider you one of the veterans in the room because you really haven't been here that long. But for you, when, how, how was that gone of – breaking in some newer players and seeing some guys that you know you, you might not be overly experienced in the program but everybody has a lot of faith in you and probably some responsibility of leadership falls on your shoulders yeah I think it just comes with time being here obviously I haven't been here very long but in terms of being here with this staff I mean I'm up there with yeah. all of us because I was here when they got here um, but at the end of the day it's just making sure everybody knows what they're doing and does the right thing and I think anybody can be a leader it doesn't matter how long you've been here I mean you see um, our captain our defensive captain Damian um, or Darren I mean uh, I mean he's been here for not even a year and he's a captain so it's really it doesn't take a long time to be here it doesn't take a long time to be a captain it's just doing the right things and holding other people accountable well I uh, typically during these interviews I, I usually ask you know where football starts with them and getting into it for you it's probably a little different from birth with your with your dad and, and probably your knowledge of the playbook as well when did you really start becoming a student of the game, Cade, and you know, really like allowed you to get to where you're at now, where that trust factor is there? You can pick up a playbook, you know what to do. Where did that kind of start for you of just want to study the game, be a student of the game, and, and be really sound in that part? Yeah, I would say my freshman year. That's the first year I was a wide receiver and the first year my dad got to coach me. Um, so that was probably the first time I ever sat down, sat down with the quarterbacks and just kind of went through the playbook and went through their reads, what they're reading, when they're, I'm going to be open. Um, I think it helps a lot being able to realize what coverages I'll be open, who, how to get open, how to get other people open. Um, so I think freshman year is when it really started. And then my dad took over the OC job, um, what would it be, my junior year. Um, so that's really helped because he was able to mold the offense and we were able to help each other because obviously 
the NFL is a little different than high school football in Arizona. So it was nice to be able to work with him, and it was a great couple of years. And obviously coming here, um, this offense is just like ours in terms of the pro concept, so it's really nice. How would you land on wide receiver? I mean, was, was Dad Kurt a little mad when he, you weren't going to take over a quarterback, or how would you land on want to play that position? Now, honestly, I have no idea. I mean, growing up, all growing up, I was a center for the longest time, and I think it was just because I loved yelling huddle at the beginning of every play, and I was the closest I'd get to quarterback because I could never throw. Um, but then moving forward, I ended up moving to D end and then tight end, and then I was a fullback in eighth grade, and then I moved to wide receiver. So just kind of all over the place in terms of I don't really know how I got to wide receiver, uh, but I'm happy I did at the end of the day. What was your recruitment like? I mean, that's kind of an interest to end up here at Nebraska. I mean, it's kind of an interesting opportunity and in how you even ended up here. What was it like, you know, getting letters and trying to figure out where you wanted to take take your, your life after high school? It was hard. Yeah, it was real hard because you have expectations going in. Um, so going into varsity football my sophomore year, obviously you want scholarships and you want that, uh, that big name and you want everyone to love you. And then you get into it and, and you have a sophomore season and no one's talking to you. And you have a junior season and so no one's talking to you. And this is when you're like, well, it's, I have one more season left. There's not much else I can do. So it was really tough. Um, and you could talk to a lot of the walk-ons here. It's, it's great to hear their stories because you know you're not the only one. Um, but being a walk-on um, here, I'm glad I came here. And that's the reason I came here is because the walk-on program is so prestigious and had so much rich history. Um, so taking a visit here and seeing that and, and being with the guys now, I'm so happy I made this decision. Obviously, there you talked about the walk-on program, but what, what other things were you looking for in a place to come play football? I'm sure you had opportunities other places, but you had me ultimately choose Nebraska, you know, not, not something a lot of Arizona kids mm -hmm. destined to be in Lincoln. But what, what was it about this place that, other than the walk-on program, that you felt like, yeah, this is, this is where I want to spend my time? Honestly, like it felt, it just felt different. And I was going to go to ASU, actually. Uh, I was going to commit there probably a couple of weeks before I took a visit here. Um, and then Blair's house, house was a GA here. He worked here. He worked with me in Arizona. He said, just come out and take a visit and see how you like it. I'm telling you, this place is special. I can't really explain it. Um, my dad was like, let's do it. So I went with my mom, up, actually, up here. And, and I came here, and he showed me the walk-on program, and I met Mike Riley at the time and the, all the coaches. And at the end of the day, you don't fall in love with the coaches. You fall in love with the program. And that's what I did, seeing that walk-on wall down there um, and being able to get away a little bit from home. ASU is 15 minutes away from my house. Um, so being able to come to a place like this is special. The other hard part with walk-ons, I can't tell you how many of I've talked to in recent years, is you get here, and then you see the guys like Wandale, and you see these four- and five-star guys and three-star guys and – pretty highly touted recruits and you go, is this ever going to happen for me? What was that, that transition for you like? Maybe your first couple of weeks of practices knowing how hard of a mountain it was going to be to climb, but ultimately get to where you're at and that's seeing the field. Yeah, no, it, it is tough because you get here and you have expectations, like I said before, and and then you get here and you see these four and five star guys and, and you see the coaches wanting to get them in because obviously they recruited and spent so much time on them. And it's tough for walk to get their opportunity because at the end of the day, I mean, you didn't get recruited like these guys did. Um, but this staff does a great job of making sure everyone gets in there, everyone is able to make plays. And if you do, you'll move up in the depth chart. Um, so that happened to me last year. I was, I was third string going into the year. We had some injuries and moved me outside, realized I knew it and just kept going up the depth chart and, and got there. And, and then this year is the same thing, getting back from injury as the bottom of the depth chart because I just had to figure my way back to the top. Um, so it's just that constant grind of just have that chip on your shoulder and realize I don't care how many stars they have. I don't care how many stars I didn't have. I'm going to work as hard as I can. And it probably helped having your dad. I mean, he's like the, the professional walk-on. I mean, I don't know that there is such a thing, but what was he kind of telling you during this process? Because there's not a better – I mean, people still talk about that in the NFL. You know, Kurt Warner is an arena league quarterback and, and Super Bowl quarterback now. I mean, what was the conversation like with, with your dad about those tough days when you really weren't feeling the best or, you know, you just needed that person to lean on? Yeah, I know it's, it's it's great to reach out to him because obviously he's been here before. He's done it all before. He's he sat four years in college and only played one year, obviously. So he knows the trials and tribulations that comes. He wasn't a walk on, but at the same point, he knows exactly how I feel. And and it was nice to be able to reach out to him and just realize that, hey, you're going to have some bad days. You're going to be at the bottom sometimes and just keep working. That's what he just tells me is just keep working, keep working. And eventually it'll all work out. And I'm a firm believer that if you keep working, eventually you get your opportunity and that's your time to shine. Your coaches have said that about you. I don't know. Yeah. So let's let's go back to I mean, we've had a couple of players in the program with dads that played in the NFL and Deontay had his dad play in the NFL and what do you what do you remember about that time you know it's so interesting hearing from the youngsters who that's that's really all you know but when you think back to that time when football was first introduced to you what stands out yeah and honestly 
I keep, I always tell people this. I wish I was just a little older because right as he was retiring is when I was really getting into that that football phase and loving it. And so I wish I was a little bit older. But yeah, I just have memories growing up of of just going to his practices and seeing that. And that's the thing. It's just so hard to look back at because I wasn't a football guy then. So all that knowledge I could have gained and all that time I could have spent with talking to people, I just missed that on it. But uh, it was awesome to have him uh, obviously playing, and I got to see him in that Super Bowl against the Steelers and um, really just showed me how tough it is to be there, how fast it is in that game, um, and how hard you have to work to get there. Was football always it for you, or were you interested in other sports? No, I hated every other sport growing up. I did not want to play any other sport, but my dad was just, he always brings up statistics of people in the NFL and how many sports they played in high school. So growing up, he made me always play two sports. It was always football and something else. So in high school, first couple of years, I did basketball, I'm tired of that. I was a center at 6'1", so I didn't want to play that anymore. Uh, and then I moved to track and then senior year I played lacrosse. So it was just a constant trying to find another sport. But when you love something as much as football, it's tough to find something else. There, there's a big factor of this equation. I'm sure it's Kate and Kurt and that gets a lot of attention. But mom still has a big voice in this too. What's she been like through this whole process of watching you go through high school, obviously playing for your dad and then, you know, being here in Lincoln? What, what she, what's she made of all this? Yeah, well, she's going to love that you asked about her, first of all. Um, but no, I mean, after every practice, obviously my dad's, talking to me about, hey, what do you, what you could you done better? What could you done better here? And, and all that jazz. And then my mom would just come to me and say, hey, did you try your best today? And that was what's awesome to see is that my mom didn't care about how many one-handed catches I had, how many yards I had. She doesn't even like football. So she didn't really care about that. It was just, hey, did you do your best today? And that was what I got to tell her. Yes, I did. And that was the most proud moment is when I'm able to tell her the one thing she always says is, do you do your best work? So that's why I try to do every single play. One thing that's always kind of resonated with me when they bring recruits here and, and, you know, every recruit is different. Some may like the jerseys, some may like the tradition, some may like the fans, some may like the weight room, whatever. The moms always like the academic side. You mentioned mom came on your visit. What did she think of Lincoln and, you know, your, your takeaway maybe on the flight home or the next couple of weeks? You know, she thought it was cold. Uh, we came here in like about February. So she thought it was really cold. And and she obviously knew how far it was away. And ASU, they could drive there. And they knew that to Lincoln, they had to take two flights. They had to take a small plane. Um, so she knew how hard it would be to get here. But at the end of the day, she wants what's best for me. And she saw, once I got here and saw the stadium, saw the coaches, saw the walk-on wall, she knew this is the place I wanted to be. And, and you're here. You're, we're obviously very glad that you're here. Now that you're finally kind of healthy, what's, what do you feel right now? I mean, you're probably just chomping at the bit to, to get back out there after finally getting the taste of it with Minnesota, having a bye week. I guess, how you feeling starting the week? I'm excited. I'm excited to get out there. I'm excited to play Indiana. They're a good team. They're going to press us, so we know what they're going to do, and, and we just have to do our job. And I'm excited to get out there. Um, it's a home game, so I'm excited to be able to go out there, home game, and be able to play a little bit. Um, and just really exciting to be able to know that I'm 100% for a whole other game. So it's, it's exciting. We only got five more games guaranteed, so the season's coming down to an end. Got to give it our all. I was obviously being on the sideline. I can see the frustration of the players, and that was very evident last, last Saturday, a week ago, with, with Minnesota. How refreshed do you think the team is now? I know you practiced, and you've been through a practice and a couple of practices last week during the bye week. How, how, how has this team responded uh, since that day and just you know getting a little time away but now we're probably feeling it to get back out there yeah no we're hungry I mean we had a couple of days off last week and but still we had three hard practices so um, we had some hard practices some hard lifts to keep us ready um, and now this week we're ready to hit somebody else we've been in ourselves for a whole week now and we're ready to hit somebody else and and we're excited going into this week because it's a game week um, games coming home game I mean we're excited for all the different aspects of it so we're ready to go Cade, really glad you're healthy. Looking forward to seeing you out there on, on, on Saturday against Indiana. Thanks for sitting out with us, man. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. My pleasure. A lot of fun. Thank you. My pleasure. A lot of fun.